Did you know that you most likely have AI in your pocket at this very moment? Did you know that AI, AI will change the, century, change the face of this world in the next century? You probably didn't. That's what I'm here to talk to you about today. AI, or artificial intelligence, is defined by John McCarthy of Stanford University as the process of making intelligent machines, specifically intelligent computer machines. This definition does include your phone, your laptop, your computer, this projector, your calculator. AI has become very integral to our society. Think about it. Has any of you heard of Y2K? Y2K was an apocalyptic, apocalyptic prediction of, um, from 1999. People believed that once 1999 transferred into 2000s, computers would shut down completely. They couldn't handle this change of date, and thus computers would be wiped out and humans in the process. Does this tell you how vital AI is to our, to our survival? And AI has come around so quickly, and most people don't really realize it. Here's 1990. In 1990, any country would have less than 25 computers per 100 people. Even the most developed countries didn't have more than 50 computers per 100 people. In 2006, these numbers skyrocketed. C countries had more than 90 computers or even 80 computers per 100 people, and were nearing 100 computers per 100 people. That's one computer per one person in a measly 16 years. This is a huge development in terms of AI. And the reason we're so dependent on it is pretty understandable. On a macro level, governments use this to collect data, store data, and organize their citizens, because in China, we have one point, you know, more than a billion people to manage. That's a huge amount of people, and without AI, we could simply couldn't do this. In America, 300 million, and AI is becoming so vital to our survival. On a micro level, I use computers to study. You might use computers to work. Um, I need my calculator to do math. And it's only becoming more and more important. And so what does this mean? Well, it means that AI really controls us in ways you may not expect. Um, it, it's also replacing jobs for humans. Um, I'm sure most of you might have seen or used a self-checkout station at a supermarket. And what it does is when you put an item through, it scans and gives you a tally and a, the, the price of your groceries. Um, and it doesn't require a human. And they're incredibly advantageous to, to supermarkets because um, you can fit a higher concentration of self-checkout stations in a smaller space, and they don't, need fee they don't need food, they don't need sleep, they don't need human rights, and they can work 24-7 without getting tired. Um, <coughs> And so it's way better than human, but they're still limited. They can't react to new situations. They can't clean the floor. They can't answer questions that people need answering. And so we still need humans to be at the supermarket. Um, but what if we didn't? And that's the next level of AI. It's called AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence. <coughs> Sorry. Artificial General Intelligence is expected to be de developed by 2040 and will change the face of this Earth. So now, think about it differently. AGI, as defined by the AGI Society, is um, artificial intelligence that matches the speed of the human brain or just matches it and mimics the human brain. This means that they can think like us, they can speak like us, they can be creative like us, converse with us just like humans. Think Jarvis. I'll go back to that later. In terms of supermarkets, we could completely wipe humans from the supermarket because if AGI was there, they could react to new situations, they could learn new skills, they could answer questions that people, have, that, that people need to have be answered without having been asked them before, been programmed to answer them. This is absolutely huge. And now what this means for us as a society is you might lose your job if you, have a, um, if you work at a supermarket or maybe you have a, some, a similar job. And it might sound bad, it might sound like huge unemployment, but it could also mean specialization. Um, a long time ago, maybe thousands, hundreds of thousands of years ago, we started developing tools and uh, started keeping animals in farms. And this means that people wouldn't have to hunt as often and we'd have these people who didn't have jobs. And so you'd, you'd imagine that to be a bad thing, but all that means is they could specialize into new categories and actually accelerate human development and make it more efficient. And this same th thing would occur. Hundreds of thousands, even millions of people wouldn't have a job. But this doesn't mean that they, they would die. This means they would find a new job in a new field and just accelerate human development. And so this is, these, are, these are huge implications. Another example is the AI butler. Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook, 
has announced his plans to develop an AI butler for his family similar to Jarvis. This AI butler could recognize faces, could check on the baby, and manage the household at all times. Very useful, but still limited, once again, by what it's been programmed to do. AGI, on the other hand, would change this completely. AGI, in a sense, could recognize new faces and essentially, um, essentially store new data and think in a different manner. Um, for those of you who have seen Iron Man, Jarvis is kind of a witty, funny, with a, like a, a spice to him that really, you know, everyone loves Jarvis. And when he, um, spoilers, but when he uh, nearly dies in the Avengers, um, everyone gets really scared because everybody loves Jarvis, right? And that's what AGI could do. They could actually make jokes and think differently. They could really change this earth and they could essentially replace humans. Um, but what's holding us back from AGI? Well, first step is hardware. I mentioned that the Tian2, a supercomputer built in China, just matches the speed of the human brain. That same supercomputer also covers 720 square meters and cost half a billion dollars to build and takes a lot of power. But our brain runs on just 20 watts and is very small. But in 2025, we will have the same processing unit for simply $1,000 in the size of a regular chip. This means AGI could exist on a much more, on a much grand scale and much more efficiently. This is the first step. The next step, on the other hand, is software, is the thinking process. You can't just think just because it's fast enough. It needs to be able to think like a human. Tim Urban, author of Way But Why, believes there are three methods to achieving AGI. His, the first possible method is simply replicating the human brain, copying it like a math test. You're sitting in class and the smart kid's next to you and he's got a way better test than you. You know he's going to do way better than you. In fact, he's already done the test and he's already got 100%. Might as well copy him. That's what we're doing. We're simply copying the brain. But it's not so easy. Brains are tiny neurons and they're much more complex than we might imagine. That's what the next step, the next possible option is, is replicating evolution. Get a whole ton of computers, give them the same task, Whichever two ones do it better, mash them together, make them a bunch more times, and we're simply doing evolution at a much faster rate. The third option is a bit more weird. Basically, we give AI the ability to code itself. We give it access to all information on artificial intelligence and let it run free. Can I imagine giving a baby a room full of crayons and every artwork ever imagined and saying, make some art? That's essentially what we're trying to do. No one knows which one's going to get there first, but people believe we should be able to reverse engineer the brain by 2030. The real problem is that AGI, it's cool, but it's not that great in comparison to ASI. ASI, or artificial superintelligence, is downright frightening. ASI exceeds intelligence of humans. It, it, it can be thousands, hundreds, only double as smart as humans. But even a slight increment increase in uh, intelligence can really just change this earth. Think about last century. What have we developed? We've developed an MRI, a nuclear bomb. We developed much faster transport mechanisms. Overall, just doubled our lifespan and changed the human race forever in simply a century. Flat screen TVs, computers, AI itself. And so that's in a century. Now, if we doubled the human intelligence, that growth would be exponentially higher, triple, um, quintuple, 10 times as fast. And if we um, make an uh, ASI 10 times as smart, the possibilities are endless. ASI, in a sense, could, end could create immortality or create us extinct. It sounds very science fiction, but it's actually a very real process. Stephen Hawking, I'm sure who many of you know, um, believes that AI could spell the end of the human race for very good reason. Because once ASI is developed, it's going to exceed us and it's going to have its own goals in mind because it's going to think independently. And if its goals aren't, allow aren't aligned with our own, it could be bad news, real bad news. But, like I said, it could, be, it could create us um, immortal. It sounds totally crazy, something out of a comic book, but so we've doubled our lifespan in a century. If we were twice as smart or five times as smart, by now, we could essentially end the deterioration of telomeres in our own bodies, reverse the aging process, cure cancer, create new methods of um, environmental engineering, and essentially solve problems that, that exist today. Every single problem depends on the development of ASI, 
because once it's developed, things will skyrocket. Things will go zero to 100 real damn quick. So, why is it scary? Well, it's scary because it's going to come around real quick. Once AGI is developed, ASI is very near around the corner because the advantages to AGI is that it can self-replicate much faster than humans. As humans, we take 18 years, give or take, maybe more, um, to self-replicate, or as most people call it, making a baby. The baby is generally a little smarter than us, um, and that's what we hope for, and we can make a lot of them. Um, and so, it's actually, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful experience, but <laughs> um, the problem is that it takes a really long time. AGI won't have this problem. Um, the thing is that it can replicate within minutes, within hours, within days, and essentially become 10 times as smart within a matter of weeks. And once it's exceeded us, think the possibilities really are endless. The time it takes for us to hit a hammer and nail together, they could be out colonizing stars and turning, uh, colonizing planets and turning stars into fuel cells. It's really crazy. And so, why am I telling you this? Why do you care? Well, the reason you should know is because we need to be ready for this change because it's going to happen. It will. People need AGI because people will need to develop. That's what happens, whether you like it or not. And if we're ready for change, things could go quite smoothly. Think about your grandma. Your grandma probably refused to get a phone or a, or a computer for a very long time, and everyone got really pissed off because they want to call her, but she refuses to pick up her mobile phone. If, for example, we do the same thing with AGI, it could be a rough experience because it's not just an object at this point, it's a natural entity that we can interact with. And in the past, refusing change has caused a lot more problems. Xenophobia and racism have been a very real thing. And the same thing could occur with AGI and the problems will just be created. If we accept this change but also be wary of it, we could really develop as a society really, really well and just it would be a fantastic experience. If we develop AC, A, ASI with the right goals in mind, like I said, we could be immortal. Your grandma might be around forever, my dad might be around forever, everybody you know might be around for, for the rest of humanity. We might be out exploring the galaxies. It does sound like science fiction, but again, it's very real. And on that note, it's tough, I know. ASI sounds pretty scary. Immortality, extinction, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a hang in the balance, but it's better to be ready than to be scared. Thank you.